Thanks for listening to the AZ Wildcats podcast. I'm your host, Mike Luke, joined by the great John Brogan. John Brogan, a good friend of mine. Also, if you play basketball in the city of Tucson, you probably know who John Brogan is, regarded by many as one of the best shooters, if the if not the best shooter in the city. Would you used to be. It? Used to be. Used to be. Uh, All now, right. I'm a go- now I'm a golfer. But if you play basketball, you know who he is. So we will talk a lot about this. All right. We got a lot to get to this show. We're going to talk. Uh, we're going to talk uh, power forward possibilities. We're going to talk, uh, tra- you know, some uh, incoming recruits, all kinds of stuff. But first, let's talk a little bit about the Kentucky opening. This does not uh, listen. They're getting turned down by some guys. Listen, when when you decide that you want to stay in Waco as opposed to going to Lexington, you know, it's just maybe it's it's just not for everybody. This has never felt like a really Tommy Lloyd type fit to me. What say you? Yeah, I so the Scott Drew thing is interesting because he's been in Waco for almost 20 years now, and it's all his kids have known. He's got kids in high school. He's got one kid at Baylor. So when you take your entire family, everything your kid has known, what your wife has known for 20 years, that's a huge factor. He's been a head coach forever, so it's not like he's you know, hurting for money. So I I understand the Scott drew one. If we get to Tommy Lloyd, his personality. Right. And Kentucky basketball are oil and water. Like I think he would get eaten alive in Kentucky. Imagine Tommy Lloyd playing a point guard. Who's turning the ball over at half court and who's shooting air balls and not subbing him out. Imagine the, uh, uprising that would happen in Lexington. That would probably not work. Also, I think Tommy Lloyd has everything that he needs in Arizona. I keep bringing this point up. I think with, uh, listen, he likes being able to uh, go where he wants. You can win a championship at Arizona. Now I know you all hear the people, oh, you haven't been to a final four, blah, blah, blah. You can get top five recruiting classes at Arizona. You can do exactly whatever you really want at Arizona. So that to me is something I don't really worry about that, Brogan. Um, I just think that this is a good fit for him. And Kentucky's in a weird spot where in where with college basketball today, with NIL, with all of those things like travel on charter planes, all that stuff. There's about 15 schools in the country that you can say, hey, we can win a national title with a few breaks. Mm-hmm. But if you're Kentucky, those are the coaches you want. Right. But those same coaches are like, well, I don't really have to leave because my situation's great. I travel. My travel is easy. You're leave? I'm comfortable. Right. And so you can throw all the money in the world, but that's not the only factor, clearly. And so they're going to have to figure out who the best coach they can hire is that is, isn't in an awesome situation, not at a school where you can win a title, not super comfortable, maybe making $2 million a year versus five or six because you're going right. to offer 10 and you know hope they get lucky with the right hire. Yeah, so we'll find out. We're going to talk a lot more about that. Brogan, can you check all your connections? You're fidgeting. Your screen is fidgeting a little bit. You sound fine, but you're fidgeting a little bit. All right, Um, let me work on the video. All right, well, he does that. I'm going to talk to myself while I'll be talking to all of you as well. But so here's also where it's here's where it's also at for me. Tommy Lloyd just feels like an Arizona guy, just like Danny Hurley feels like a UConn guy. You Danny Hurley can win a lot of championships at UConn, and not only can he win a lot of championships at UConn. He's kind of got that really good mantra going where you've got your guys that fit really well. Everybody's everybody just kind of works. And to me, I don't know that I'm going away from that. You do appear to have fixed the issue, John Brogan. You are a man yeah, of many qualities. Yeah, for a man of many qualities. All right. Now, enough, enough about this. Let's talk the power forward position. You and I are big fans of Trey Townsend. Is he perfect? No. Obviously, he's not perfect, but he is also somebody that. He can get buckets. We've seen that Arizona at times in the NCAA tournament has struggled to get buckets. And that has been a little bit of an issue for Arizona. I like Trey Townsend. Is he perfect? No, but I would like to have him. Yeah. Here's what I think I've learned in the Tommy Lloyd era so far is his offense is amazing and we can score points. 
Right. But that doesn't necessarily worry me. But what I do worry about is in tough situations, tournaments, late game situations, you need guys who can get buckets and not within the system. You need to be able to hand the ball to somebody. Houston's a great example. They give the ball to Jamal Shedd. They run high screen and roll. Everybody else gets out of the way, and he goes and makes a play. Right. So I need more guys like that at Arizona, not less, because in late-game situations, I want to be able to give the guy to, the ball to somebody who can score. With Townsend, am I going to give him the ball with 18 seconds left in the game and say, hey, get me a bucket? No, but I can throw him the ball on the block and say, go get me a bucket, and he does that better than most power forwards Lloyd has had, maybe Tabellis, but certainly better than Keyshot. So. Right. That's why I'm a fan of him because he can get buckets. If you look at his, you know, seven or eight games against the high major teams, he averaged like 22, nine and three or something crazy like that. So, yeah, and you know, I get people saying, well, you know, you know, the percentages aren't great. I get all that. But when you're also one of like two dudes on the team going against other really good teams, you're not going to have the greatest percentages. Also, people have to realize as well that this isn't a if you're in the transfer portal, you're in there for a reason. You're not a perfect player. Like Doug Gottlieb always says, pros don't go into the transfer portal. They just don't. That's not right. something that happens. So Townsend to me is a good fit. Now, is he ideal? No. You wish that he would be a little bit more athletic. I totally get that. And probably a little bit better of a defender. But I'll also take somebody that has been able to drop 17 and 11 on North Carolina State or on uh, uh, Kentucky, you know, the 32 and 12 on North Carolina State. He's put up good numbers against good teams. So when somebody like Shearman, messages us and he says oh well you know there's a real worry that he can't do this against you know good teams because he's did it the mid-major i say no i say look at his stats john brogan and i say look at the moments yeah. like the ncaa tournament the biggest moment like we want to talk about caleb love and pella larson against you know clemson right well give me the guy that got 32 and 13 against nc state then right like, that's the opposite of what we complain about with our current players you know what they did in the tournament Right. Give me the guy that wants it. That's what I guess I will uh, go with that. Now, again, he's six foot six, but again, that's in college. I get it that he would be the power forward. Keyshaw Johnson was six foot seven. So the other one that's interesting as well, Mark Mitchell. I'm cool with Mark Mitchell. You want to have Mark Mitchell? You want to have Mark Mitchell? I am totally okay with that. I do think that, uh, you know, he's, I think he's basically a little bit bigger version, better version of Keyshaw Johnson coming over from Duke, obviously 11 and six, really good defender, uh, offensively, not bad. He's, um, I think he's he would be kind of a better Keyshaw Johnson. I would be more than okay with him. Yeah. I like Mitchell. He's athletic. He can defend. Has a really, really ugly jump shot. Oh, that so thing is terrible. The spacing people translate. would like it. At least with Keyshot, I could see a path to him being a 35% shooter. He turned out to be a 40% three-point shooter. Mitchell, I don't see that ever happening. Right. Um, what intrigues me about Mitchell is with Lewis, Bradley, and Mitchell you become a dominant defensive team. Right. What doesn't intrigue me about Mitchell is you put a thousand percent faith in Tommy Lloyd to be able to score points. Right. Because the team isn't going to be able to just manufacture buckets. Like that team screams five minute droughts. Yes. Exactly. So you got to really trust Lloyd's offensive kind of prowess and, and system if you go the Mark Mitchell route. But I like him. I mean, he he, he definitely solves the need for Arizona. For sure. I would be okay. I would be more than okay with either one of these. These are the two guys that I'm looking at in the portal. I do not care about Xavier Amos. I keep hearing this name brought up. Listen, you average 14 and four at, uh, where is it? Uh, Northern, uh, Northern Illinois or wherever it was. And cool, you shoot three threes per game. That is not spacing. Nobody cares about Xavier Amos shooting those threes. It doesn't bring any spacing and... I think people need to understand that and it doesn't. So I, I think Trey Townsend and uh, Mark Mitchell are clearly the two best possible candidates for Arizona. Look, the, the, we used to, when we used to play, we used to have a thing where we would let certain guys shoot threes. Right. And they would make a couple. And some people on the team would be like, man, we got to guard him now. No, we don't because he can't make enough to win. Right. I don't care if Keyshawn made two threes at the start of the game. He's probably not making nine in the game. So right. good. Like it's part of the plan. I can't let Caleb Love go six of nine from three or I'm losing for sure. And so that's that's the whole power forward argument. Keyshot was never going to make enough threes in a game for Arizona to win because of that. And so you have to kind of remove the the idea that Arizona needs a three-point shooting power forward. To your point, you're not getting Lowry Markin in the portal. Yeah, exactly. So we should embrace the strengths of who we who we have potential, you know, gets in the portal with Townsend and and Mitchell and figure out how they fit in the system to make the system go.
How did we get to this point where it's considered spacing if somebody shoots? And again, I've been talking about this all week, and I'm going to continue to talk about this. But how did we get to this point where it's considered spacing if somebody shoots two and a half threes per game? And therefore, well, you've got to be able to guard them out to three. Well, how did we get to this point? This was not a thing five years ago. Yeah, to me, spacing is simple. It's system based, which Tommy already gets great spacing with his system. So Arizona is not ever going to have a spacing problem with as long as Lloyd's, you know, at the helm. But if you've got a center that you can run high screen and rolls and they can flare and shoot threes off the catch, that's going to mess up a defense. But putting key shot in the corner and having people run off screens and get into the paint and kick him to shoot a three, that's not spacing. The defense right. is still going to collapse and guard the paint 10 out of 10 times, and they're going to take their chance with him shooting threes. So I, I don't think a spacing is that. I think spacing is a really unique thing that's that's specific to people. 98% of the time, it's system-based. Right. Okay. So there's where it's at. Now, John Brogan, have you ever won the Arizona lottery? Now, be honest no, with but you. I would, I would love to. I would, I would love to, but no. There's a lot of people out there that say they have, that they, a lot of people out there that are very modest about winning the Arizona lottery, and they don't say that they have. So again, if they have, you can be honest with me. I'm two, two degrees of separation from the Virginia state lottery, but not the Arizona state lottery. All right. Well, either way, check out the Arizona lottery. Like uh, John Brogan, it is for the people by the people. Again, check out the Arizona lottery. You will thank me later on this, all kinds of good stuff. And again, it is for the people by the people. I will continue to say that the, uh, the great thing about it is that again, this is a, uh, it's all kinds of good stuff. Check it out when you can the Arizona lottery. Okay. Now, Let's talk about uh, ArizonaLottery.com, by the way. Okay, now let's talk a little bit about let's talk a little bit about Jamari Phillips and the uh, mm -hmm. the shooting guard position and the shooting guard position. A lot of people have talked about uh, where Arizona is. You know, you talked about Joe San Sainon. You talked about uh, you talked about you know Carter Bryant. Obviously, those guys are all good. I think that we need to talk a little bit more about Jamari Phillips. I'm a big fan of Jamari Phillips's game. I want you very rarely see a guy that can score at all three levels like he can and not only score at all three levels, but he's got a little bit of an attitude towards him. I very much like that about him. That to me is a good thing. Yeah. And to me, what I, what I kind of live by is the attitude makes the player in a lot of situations. Sometimes your attitude can be a drag on you. Think Patrick Beverly, right? He gets mm -hmm. a bad rep Draymond. Right. But for the most part, People who have that kind of attitude or swag, as the young kids say, right. that typically takes you to a different level as a player. The thing I'm intrigued about with Jamari is Arizona needs tough shot makers. They need guys when the shot clock's winding down. Again, I get back to the end of the game stuff. Guys who you can give the ball to and they can go make a contested shot. You're not going to get wide open shots in late game situations or winding down shot clocks. You need dudes who can make contested shots. Pella, not a contested shot maker. Boswell, right. not a contested shot maker. Love potential and he can make tough shots he's the only guy we had last year and so that's why i'm intrigued by phillips again i don't think he makes much of an impact as a freshman he might play 10 or 12 minutes a game but as a sophomore he's a guy who i could see averaging double digit points at arizona sooner rather than later because he can just score like and i always tell people this too i've never understand i've never I, I get that it's kind of an instant gratification thing but i've never understood the whole thing about needing to get to you know, be, uh, basically being able to, uh, to, you know, that I've got to get out of here. I've got to be in the NBA in a year or two. If you've got to take two years to be able to get there, cool. I don't get it. I've never mm -hmm. understood that worry. And, you know, if he's a two or a three year player, I got no problem with that. And again, you look at next year's roster, they could potentially be loaded. You've already got Jaden Bradley. You could potentially have Caleb Love. You got Joe San Sain on as well with Jamari Phillips. You know, if you got to, you know, if it takes a year to kind of get to where you want, that's, I get it. You know, look at UConn. UConn's next year. You've got a bunch of top 40 kids that basically rode the pine this year. And guess what? They're going to start next year. Yeah. And the dynamic of college basketball has changed. You don't win with freshmen. Right. You win with 23 and 24 year olds, thanks to the portal. And so, like, we don't need Phillips to be awesome as a freshman. If he is, great. But we need him as a sophomore and as a junior because that type of depth and experience is what's winning in the tournament now. Um, yeah, so I like Phillips as a sophomore, junior type guy. Um, again, we need scoring. So 
I'm always going to be a fan of guys who can. I am always going to be a fan of scoring. And we'll, t- again, I, you can't have too many scores. To me, it's almost, and we've seen this before. Everybody talks about Tommy Lloyd's with the offense. The offense is very, very good. I like all of that. But again, this is still an offense that it's not a Greg Popovich type thing where you're going to score a lot of things off sets off of you. It's going to be kind of freewheeling. It's going to be kind of, you're going to take the shots that you can when you can get the shot. And that is kind of a, like I said, that's where it is. Uh, that's where it is. That's why I like Jamari Phillips, that he is somebody that can get those shots. So we'll find out now. Casey Kennedy says, is there any worry that St. on decommits if Caleb comes back? Not really. I think that people know that, or, you know, I think that, uh, listen, Jason, Joe on St. on's a different animal. I, it does crack me up a little bit that, um, he does fall in the ratings though. When he reclassifies, mm-hmm. If you can find me 21 better players or 21 better prospects, I would love to see them. But there's going to be enough minutes to go around. That's why I caution patience with other players. Because again, if you got four perimeter players, they can all play 20 plus minutes per game. That's kind of what I'm thinking it's going to be. And if that means that Jamari Phillips, by the time he's a sophomore, is really, really good, I'm cool with that too. It's nice being able to have that one in the wing. Yeah. And and Arizona didn't just learn that Caleb Love was thinking about coming back yesterday. Right. And so, you know, when Sanon committed, like I would be shocked if there wasn't conversations that, hey, Love's a possibility. If not, you're probably starting. If he does come back, you're still going to be the first guy off the bench and play 20, 25 minutes a game. So I don't think that's an issue either. Um, And the team's going to need depth. Like there's going to be games where Jaden Bradley's not going to play 35 minutes. There's going to be games where KJ Lewis, well, there's going to be half the games where KJ Lewis is in foul trouble. So there's going to be plenty of minutes to go around for the four guards at the guard spot. Um, So I don't, I don't think that's an issue. Yeah. I don't, I don't worry about that, but, and then let's talk a little bit about Carter Bryant, Carter Bryant, another one to me, I think he's going to play, listen, Carter Bryant's going to play, but this could also be something like an KJ Lewis type role where it's more like kind of 15 to 17 minutes per game, something to that effect. And I am okay with that. You got to remember too, going into the big 12, this is a different animal that we got. It's, this is an entirely different animal and it's going to be difficult. I get a lot of people saying, why don't you just put Carter Bryant at power forward? That's difficult when you look at playing a team like a Houston, when you look at playing some of these other squads, this is going to be a more, it's going to be different, Brogan. Yeah. And I think we have to temper our expectations on kind of all freshmen, unless there's going to be the rare freshmen who come in and and dominate college basketball, but everybody's so much older now and they've been playing basketball for a long time. Whereas, you know, seven, eight years ago, you could win a title with freshmen. So I think we have to think about that too, but also, Lloyd, maybe to a fault sometimes, is too transparent in his recruiting, yeah. I think. And so Carter Bryant knows Lyon exactly what he's getting himself into. Sometimes I wish Lloyd would hold a few things closer to the vest so he could be a little more dynamic recruiting, but he's not, right? That's what that's I guess it's a good thing, right? He's honest, he's up front. Carter Bryant knows exactly what he's walking into at Arizona and he's going to be just fine. Yeah, he's going to be just fine. Now let's talk uh let's talk a little bit about that uh, perimeter. But first, Brogan, do you play prize picks? Uh, not anymore. You I don't used to strike me as you strike me as somebody that would play prize picks. Yeah, I used to. No, I don't. Oh. All right. Well, either way, get in on the playoff action and win up to 100 times your money on prize picks as you and the world's best players take the game to a new level during basketball's postseason. Playoffs begin April 20th, playing around April 16th, 17th, and 19th. All right. Now go to prizepicks.com slash PHNX and use code PHNX for a first deposit match up to $100. That's prizepicks.com slash PHNX and use code PHNX. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. Now, Brogan, have you ever used game time? No, actually. This is very, very dumb on your part, Brogan. You made a lot of money in your life. You got a beautiful family, but not everybody is perfect. Brogan is proving this right now by not also, using a game. Also time. known for making a few dumb decisions. So this yes, is exactly. This is one of those. Brogan not using game time is one of those. So here's the deal. You can get tickets to bad concerts, to great uh, uh, sporting events. You name it. Again, here's the cool. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Don't download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code PHNX for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply again. Create an account and redeem code PHNX for $20 off. Download the Game Time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. All right. Now, looking into the Big 12, we got to talk a little bit about some of these matchups now because we're starting to get a figure about, we're getting kind of an idea about who Arizona is going to have. Now, let's. Just for sake of argument, because we've got all off season to be able to figure this for all just for sake of argument, let's assume that Caleb Love is on the team. So mm-hmm. you're looking at probably a perimeter of, excuse me, you're looking at a per, uh, starting perimeter of Jaden Bradley, KJ Lewis, Caleb Love, and let's just 
you know, for uh, craps and giggles, let's just say that you trade Townsend and Mount Crevis. The one team that I think is going to be kind of head and shoulders above everybody, at least initially, is going to be Kansas. Kansas is loaded because you've already got you got Hunter Dickinson, you got the five star top ten kid. They'll put uh, backing him up. You got KJ Adams, you got Furphy, you got Zeke Mer or uh, Zeke uh, Mayo, you've got uh, Dewan Harris, uh, Feline or whatever the point guard's name is. Is that his name, LeBaron Feline? Um, Feline, yeah, yeah, Feline. It's a loaded team. And yeah. that all those guys are using the COVID years as well. So where do you, where do you stand on Arizona and how they match up with Kansas? You know, as long as Hunter Dickinson is at Kansas, I'll always feel good about my matchup because of what we did to him when he was at Michigan. Right. right. But Kansas is going to be another example of a team that's going to be really, really experienced. They're going to have a lot of four and five year guys. And so I think they're going to be, you know, they'll be one or number two in the country. They return way too much not to be the only player they really leave it loses McCullers, which is a big loss. But mm -hmm. um, you know, I think we match up okay with them actually. I don't hate I do. the matchup for us. I think they're gonna be a little better, a little more experienced, and Crevis is gonna need to take a big jump for us to be able to compete with Kansas. I think up front they're clearly better than Arizona, but I think on the perimeter, Arizona's a little bit more dynamic, honestly. I like yeah. DeJuan Harris. I like He's a really good point guard, but he's also limited. He's never going to score. He is the, uh, we talked about this before the Duke game. He's kind of that Tyrese Proctor. Those are good players to have on a team, but I don't worry about point guards that can't, that really can't score 25, 28 points. I'm cool with having them, but he's not going to take over a game. Mayo, I'm assuming is going to be good because almost everybody that's come from that conference that there's this crazy stat on CBS. There's this, uh, everybody that's come from that conference or been the player of the year that's transferred. They've all been good. I'm assuming he's going to be good up front. It's a little bit different. KJ Adams is really solid, but he's kind of a Keisha Johnson from an impact perspective. He's not going to drop 25 or 28 points on you per, uh, consistently and Dickinson again Dickinson is good but he's also limited I do not I agree with you now I am a little intrigued by the big man they've got the top 10 player coming in that to me is uh that to me is fascinating but what say you you know again I, I go back to experience we're still going to be relatively young because we're going to get a lot of minutes from KJ Lewis we're going to get a lot of minutes from saying on we're going to get a lot of minutes from Bryant Crevis is going to be a sophomore so I think Arizona Next year will be a team that's significantly better heading into the tournament. Whereas this year, I actually feel like we peaked early and mm -hmm. kind of we did plateaued heading early. into the tournament. Whereas next year, though, you've got a lot of upside with Bradley as a full time starter, Lewis in his second year, and, and those things. Love will kind of be the stabilizing factor. So I'm I'll be much higher on Arizona come February March than I will at the start of the season. But that's not I a bad I'm, thing, you know. No, and the schedule is going to allow us to take some lumps early and get better. Whereas this year we won some games early and we're competitive in the other tough games to where it was like, Oh, okay, we got a chance to go deep and then we flame out. So I'd almost rather us have guys that can develop throughout the year to where we're better come March, as opposed to, you know, peak early. All right. Meisner says, I think you guys are sleeping on Bryant. My money is on him being a stud from day one. I listen. I think he's going to make a lot of money. I think he's going to be somebody that is going to be uh, a first round pick. I just think that it's going to take him a little bit of time. And again, there's nothing wrong with that. I think in this day and age, people think that if it's going to take you a year or two, then that means that, well, you know, they must not be that good. You got to remember, I mean, you look at the history of Arizona, guys that came in that were just total difference makers, total studs. I mean, there's just, I mean, even in a school like Arizona, there's not a ton of those guys. I mean, there's not a lot of Mike Bibby's and DeAndre Aydens. There's good players for sure, but that's, there's not a ton of studs. I think people got to remember that. Yeah. And I think here's where I'm at with Arizona next year is there's a few things that I don't have to worry about next year that I've worried about every season coming in. And that's, will my fresh or will my point guard play as hard as he can and be able to defend right. Boswell? didn't have confidence in that. Kreese definitely didn't have confidence in that. So we can hype up, you know, Kreese's three-point shooting and Boswell's potential, all those things. But Bradley checks the boxes of, I'm going to show up, play super hard, and play great defense, and I'm going to shoot free throws. Right. Lewis, same idea. Play super hard. He's going to take a step and get better. But I don't have to worry about my effort, my energy, and my defense. And those are the things that, if you can count on, you're going to be competitive all the time. I've got love as an All-American right out the gate if he comes back. Right. So my backcourt in my mind, is better than Arizona's backcourt's ever been with Lloyd 
because I check all the boxes I need to check from day one. Now, are they going to be able to shoot it great? Probably not. But are they going to offset that with getting to the free throw line and getting you know, points in transition and being able to create turnovers? Yeah. So it'll be a little different than what we've been used to, which is a lot of perimeter shooting and things of that nature. But we don't have – we haven't had in the past what we have next year, which is why I think the backcourt's going to surprise people and be a lot better than what you've been used to with Tommy Lloyd. All right. Now, who is Dick Wilson – uh, John Brogan. There's a guy in here named Dick Wilson who's talking about your coaching career at Greenfields. I don't know, but that's Hold that on. was a long time Hold ago. On. Where is he? Uh, he says he ran. Uh, he says Brogan. Oh, where is this? Dick Wilson. Where is he? John Brogan to Kentucky. He won at Greenfields with a bunch of smart guys. It's true. Here's what I would say: If Kentucky offered me 100 mil over eight years, I would be on would the first. This, would, would you take that? Would you take that job? I would leave this live stream right now to take that job. All right. Yeah. I don't really, I don't really blame you. All right. Now I want to get back to, because your screen isn't buffering now. So I want to, I uh, want to be, cause we're going to redirect this very good job, John Brogan. But I want to talk again a little bit about Philip Jamari Phillips, because again, I think that he's kind of been overlooked here. This is somebody that was also considered a top 15 kid just, you know, less than eight, 10 months ago. Now, he didn't play a lot of high school basketball. Again, played AAU, but not a ton of high school basketball. Switched a couple schools, dealt with a really uh, bad sprained ankle. But if he comes in and, you know, with the right mindset, I think the sky really is the limit because you rare, very rarely see players in high school that can score from all three levels, that can score from the three-pointer, that have the pull-up and can get to the hoop. And he's an underrated athlete. I'm excited to see what he can do. Yeah, one of us needs to ask our good buddy Jason Shear about the conspiracy theory of how every you know commit who commits to Arizona somehow drops in the rankings. Right. Now it's Bryant, it's Sanon, it's Phillips, it's KJ Lewis. Like it's getting a little out of control. How consistent right. it is. Um, the, so there's questions about Phillips, right? He's been to like 17 high schools in four years. Um, he's been you know potentially kicked out of one or two schools and, and things of that nature. But if I ignore that and I just stick to basketball, which is what he's really good at, yeah. then I don't understand how he's not a good player for Arizona as a sophomore or a junior. I think he's going to, I think Arizona's going to add a backup point guard in the portal. I don't know who it is yet, but I think they're going to add somebody, which if they do that, then I don't think he gets too many minutes as a freshman, unless right. he's KJ Lewis, where he comes in and he's so good, you have to play him. And we'll know that early in some of these exhibitions and some of these games that we're going to win by 20 or 30. But Again, if I have to build the perfect basketball player, I want somebody offensively who can create their own shot and who can score. I don't want to be dependent on the guys who can't really handle. I'm one of the biggest Pella Larson fans out there, but he had flaws, right? He was a set shot suitor who couldn't create his own shot. Right. He wasn't going to beat you off the dribble too much, even though he got better this year about it. I'd rather have the guy who I can give the ball to. Yeah, and make layups, exactly. And make layups. I'd rather have a guy who I can give the ball to who even if it takes him six dribbles can still get me a decent shot off, which that's what Phillips can do. Like there's no yeah. question about his ability to do that. And honestly, I like in this one thing I like, I like a little bit of an edge to a player. I like having a player that mm -hmm. can, um, you know, again, Tommy Lloyd is a really good dude. Like you can just tell that. And Tommy Lloyd, I think very much views these guys as kind of his family kind of, you know, and he's going to stick with him. I mean, let's be honest watching Kylan Boswell this year. I would have uh, dramatically reduced his minutes, but Tommy Lloyd, who is much smarter than me, I know, I know that that's probably hard to believe, but he is, he decided that, um, he decided that he needed to, he, he needed to play different or he needed to, you know, just play through it. So again, he didn't really do that. I get it. But at the same time, you also, I'm okay with having guys that have a little bit of an edge to it, because I think that sometimes you need to be able to police yourself a little bit. I do like that aspect. And more times than not, when you're a player who has NBA potential, that usually will drive you in the right direction to where I don't have to be worried about any sort of potential attitude issues, things of that nature. Again, it doesn't work out every time, but somebody like Phillips, who is definitely has NBA potential, like I think his drive for basketball will take care of any other issues. And and again, his edge is what's going to push him and make him the player he's going to be. So it, it, you know, it's easy to look at a kid and it, the easy thing to do is say, eh, he's not going to be that good or he's going to, he won't be at Arizona in after his freshman year because of his attitude, because of his high school career, whatever. But when you have the skills he has, where else is he going to go and develop? Like Arizona is conducive to him being able to shoot shots, play offense, all those things. So 
again, I, I, I think he'll be here for a couple of years. I think he'll be good. All right. Now, well, let's get to Conrad Martinez. That was just brought up. That is an interesting mm-hmm. point. But first, OGs. OGs. All right. Check it out. OGs has launched two new products made with live rosin, Rick Simpson oil, and the naturals, the big OGs. Naturals are vegan gummies made with live rosin available in the sweet clementine flavor. Our good friend Ben White likes the fruits and the creams. So if it's good enough for Ben White, it should be good enough for everybody. Again, to learn more about OG's gummies and where you can find them, head on over to ogsbrands.com. Must be 21 up to enjoy responsibly. I am of the opinion that uh I am of the opinion that uh Ben White it was on the forefront of this. He was always telling me about OG's. Ben White knows exactly what he is uh, doing. So again, check this out because I would also confirm and if we all agree with it, then it's, there's probably something to it OG's. Okay. Connor uh, Conrad Martinez I am, I want to be with Conrad Martinez. Here's where I like, I would like to be pleasantly surprised by Conrad Martinez. I do not want, I cannot go into the season with Conrad Martinez as my backup point guard. That's where I stand with Conrad Martinez. I'm as big an Arizona Homer as you'll find. And if Conrad Martinez plays meaningful minutes at Arizona, we're in trouble. Like plain and simple. There's going to be, 1,362 point guards in the portal better than Conrad Martinez. So right. we need to go get one of them. You need to be able to get one of those. And again, if he surprises, if he shows, I just think it's very, very difficult to be able to, I think it's going to be very, very difficult to be able to depend on that. Now, Kylan Boswell, this was asked, honestly, Brogan, we haven't talked about Boswell. Let's talk about Boswell. I'm of the opinion that sometimes just a separation is good for both sides. Boswell yeah. can play. We know Boswell can play. I think in Arizona, I, th- I don't know that either side handled this thing exactly, you know, perfectly. But if Boswell goes to Illinois, it would not surprise me at all if he's good there. It really wouldn't. Yeah, and Boswell's going to need the right situation and the right coach. Um, he came into Arizona young, and he was immature. Now he's two years older. If he gets the right coach who can, you know, maybe, I don't know, I don't want to say discipline, but like, get him to be a little more focused than maybe he was at Arizona, then I think there's upside with him. Look, he was ranked a top 30 recruit in the country for a reason. It's not because he doesn't have talent or skill. We saw the Duke game. We still have that Duke game. That was what's wild to me about the Duke game is it's not like it was just some dude like me just shooting a bunch of wide open threes in the corner. He was getting his off a little hardened step back. He was making a lot of different plays. Yeah. And so he's going to need, he's going to need to not go to a program that's going to let him, just kind of flounder around and do what he wants on and off the court. If he goes to somewhere that can rein him in a little bit, I think he'll be good. Yes, I would agree with that. And uh, also, Emmanuel Steven, I would take one of these players every single class. I am kind of out. Now, listen, if it's an obvious guy, I'm cool with it. But I'm kind of out on the international, uh, the, relying on the international players. Because at this stage, we have a big enough sample size to know. And again, we both like Mount Creevis a great deal. We think he's going to be really good. but. There's also a lot of players. Adama Ball didn't really do anything here. Philly B didn't really do anything here. Morauskas didn't really do anything here. Henry hasn't really done anything here so far. Conrad, kind of the same thing. I am okay with bringing in one of those players a year. I can't have three or four of them anymore. And Emmanuel Steven is the type of guy that I like. I like bringing in one of those players every single year because I think he's got some Coloco type upside. I get people all the time that are like, Mike, he's going to play 20 minutes a game. I would love to be wrong on that. I do not see that being the case. But Emmanuel Steven, I think, has a world of potential. Yeah, I think I think Arizona will bring in a backup big man in the portal, I think. Um, I don't think they want to rely on Vaser and Steven for their backup center because there's going to be games again where Crevis can play 25 minutes. I don't think we want one of those guys playing 15 minutes at the center spot. Um, but I do think Tommy's recruiting philosophy has changed. I think he came sure. in and leaned into hard with what he knew. I don't think he had a ton of other relationships to lean on, you know, replacing Miller. I think he's taken a couple years to get that. And if you look at this class, then you got Bryant, you got Phillips, you got St. on, you got Steven. So um, I think he's aligned to the idea of we're going to be a lot more domestic in our recruiting and we're going to be picky with the international. They got awesome international players at Gonzaga, but they never got four in a class. So I think right. he'll still take his international players. And I think he, he'll have a good eye for the ones that he can really get. I think it was a little bit of not desperation, but comfort for him to start. Now he's kind of got it settled. 
You know, well, I want to talk about one other thing real quick. You know who's uh, Brayden Burry's Arizona doing very well with him, Brian. But uh, first, no better time to become a PHNX diehard. Go to go PHNX, become a diehard, join the discourse or you, Discord. You can also get all kinds of behind the scenes information as well, merchandise and this very cool shirt, Jacob Franklin. If you could pull this shirt up, it would look very, very cool on anybody. A great birthday gift, a great normal gift. BTFD new release. Become a PHNX diehard hard today. All right. As far as Braden Burries and uh, Tune Day, Arizona is doing very, very well with both of them. What were we just talking about before that read, Rogan? I said I was going to go somewhere. Conrad? Uh, no, it wasn't. Euros? Conrad. Recruiting right. philosophy? Oh, oh, Euros. One thing we got to give Sean Miller is that Sean Miller did a really good job in hindsight with Euros. Or think about it this way. I mean, mm -hmm. some of these guys were like game breakers. You got Lowry Markinen. You've got Azulis Tabellis. Uh, who else? Matherin. Yeah, Matherin. Kerr. I mean, Kreese, yeah. Kerr's good. Like, he's not yeah. awesome, but he's good. You know, right. he's not a man. Daniel Bacho, who turned out to be a really good player yeah. as well. And even Tibet Gurner isn't bad. By the way, would you, who is a better basketball player, Tibet Gurner or Philly B? Oh, Tibet, easy. Well, I don't, let, I don't know if it's easy. Let, let me see it's Philly good. B at his, let me see Philly B at, a, at his new school for a year, because if he goes to the right level, then he'll actually play so i'm a little worried that utah state might be a slight i think he should be more at a san jose state type yeah yeah, yeah. but we will uh we will find that out i do trust tommy oh that was the other thing before we sign off i want to give uh, mulebach always me mentions this point and he said tommy's a pretty introspective guy i think people look at him and they're like they're like, well, you know, he's just this aw shucks nice guy. He is an aw shucks nice guy, but he's also shown the last couple off seasons that he can make difficult decisions when he needs to make difficult mm -hmm. decisions. I, I was very, very skeptical that he was going to run off Kerr. I because again, he was abs, you know, it just kind of looked like that was just going to be his th his guy. Kerr Carissa was run off this past year. Kylan Boswell, he was basically with him through th thick and thin. And you and I were me messaging back and forth. I'm like, they got to like, give you an idea. I'm like, dude, they got to start Bradley next year. You're, you're like, I don't know, man. I mean, some coaches just have it, but Lloyd has shown also that he can make the tough decisions. And I give him a lot of credit on that. So when people are like, oh, he's just this pushover, that's really not the case because his actions speak louder than words there. Yeah. And I, th I think it depends on your definition of pushover. Do I think he's going to be a disciplinarian and yelling at players left and right and all those things? No, that's not his style. But as long as you can make the hard decisions and, and he can make the edits to his recruiting style and things of that nature, knowing going to the Big 12, I'm all good. I am totally good with that. Now, Robbie Dawn says, Mike, how are we feeling on the up oncoming uh, tr football transfer portal? We will talk about that. Yeah, every everything. Here's here's where we're at with the transfer portal. Everything is going to be, every single portal opening, there's going to be movement. Arizona's got 14 open scholarships. Arizona's going to look to add a lot to that. Also, Umar Ballo, leader of men. The great Erica Day with a question here. Where do we think Umar is going? I was, it was cool to see all the love that Umar is getting. Umar can essentially go to whatever school he wants, Brogan. My personal take is o Umar is going to take, I almost called him Omar. Yeah. Um, right. He's going to, I think he's going to take the most NIL money he can get. As he should. That's what I, as he should. He's earned it 100%. Because he's not playing in the NBA. If you can get take as much money as you possibly can, and we will not, uh, nobody will begrudge it. If any of these schools offer him 750K, like all day, right. Illinois, fine, Kentucky, fine, Kansas State, fine, Indiana, cool. all good. I will take the money. You just give it to me. All right. On that note, we're going to sign off just a wee bit early. Brogan's got to get back to work. Jason Shear will be back with us at 1030 tomorrow. But Brogan, you're the man. I appreciate you, dude. Hey, I need someone in the chat in the comments tomorrow to ask Sheer about the Arizona ranking conspiracy theory for me. That is a very good point. We will ask about that, though. Although Sheer does agree with some of that stuff, though. He agreed that KJ Lewis should have been rated like 95th. Yeah, right. So yeah, that's true. We don't really let Sheer off the hook on so some of that stuff. But on that note, everybody out there, you guys are the ones that make the chat. You're smarter than me. I rely on you. Brogan, same to you. Jacob Franklin behind the scenes navigating everything. We appreciate all of you guys. You've been listening to the AZ Wildcats podcast. We all silly like the mayor.